breakthrough that uh, space science witnessed through Chandrayaan-1 has raised the bar and expectations are really, really very high from Chandrayaan-2. In fact, the entire world is tracking and monitoring the journey of Chandrayaan-2. Dr. Mukund Rao, we are all waiting with bated breath to know what is going to happen tonight. Of course, while we are all expecting a successful soft landing, but we do know the challenges and this is the first ever attempt of India to soft land uh, a rover and orbiter on uh, the surface and that to the south polar region of moon. Can you take us through the importance of uh, this soft landing? Yeah, you know, uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, the, one of the biggest uh, accomplishments of this Chandrayaan-2 mission would be the, uh, the, the process and the technology of doing a soft landing. Uh, unlike a, a satellite which is at very high velocity orbiting the moon, uh, Earth or even the Moon, you know, which uh, in this case Chandrayaan would be orbiting at around 2 to 3 kilometers when it is about 100 kilometers height, when you land, you can't have the velocity of this satellite or the craft at that high velocity. So you need the process of actually reducing the velocity in a very step-by-step -step process as you approach, approach the surface of the moon. So this is a big challenge you're, where you're moving from something like 2 to 3 kilometers per second slowly to 2 meters per second as you approach the surface and then virtually making it 0 uh, meters per sec second velocity when it really touches down. So this is one of the biggest accomplishments that will happen today, uh, later in part of the day in that sense. The complexity of the soft landing is also much more because you don't really know the terrain in that sense. You don't know where there are the boulders, where are the rocks, fragments, soil, you don't know where the craters are, you don't know where the, what is the elevation and so on. So the technology of soft landing in Chandrayaan-2 uh, tries to simulate and analyze this data on a near real-time basis. So imagine the craft is coming down and as it comes down there are sensors in the, in the Vikram which will be measuring the height and the terrain, mapping the surface as it is slowly coming down and then autonomously calculating the terrain uh, and its characteristic on a near real time basis using it in the software to again model the process of uh, debraking and braking that needs to be done to reduce the velocity and ultimately touch down in a very very soft way so that there is no disturbance to the to the craft and all the equipment start working. So this is really a process though even though we use the word as soft landing but just imagine this has to go through something like 200 to 300 steps of uh, processes before it actually touches, uh, touches down in that particular thing. Right. The third aspect of the complexity is that uh, to reduce the velocity you need uh, engines or uh, thrusters which will re really do a braking mechanism. It's like a car going at high speed suddenly you have to brake and then again de-brake and again brake down as you, as, as you move in that particular orbit. So there are five thrusters or five engines in the, in the Vikram which will be firing in tandem or on based upon the terrain conditions and slowly de-brake the velocity. Uh, ultimately bring it down to about 2 meters per hmm. second when it is a few meters from the surface and, and slowly, slowly, uh, softly landing it and making the velocity virtually zero. Hmm. So this process is fantastic and I think uh, this is going to be a very great accomplishment for India to achieve in this particular mission.